Welcome to Breaking the Wall of Terrestrial Seismicity. Imagine you're studying orchestras, but for about 400 years, you were only allowed to look at them and not listen. Well, in this analogy, orchestras are the universe, and since 2015, we can also listen to them using gravitational waves, but only at high frequency, so it sounds a little bit more like this. Black objects that we can now listen to, for example, black holes, that you see here revolving around each other and smashing into each other, becoming one, send out a pulse of gravitational waves. This pulse of gravitational wave stretches and squeezes the Earth. Well, here the scale of this effect is vastly exaggerated because we need detectors like LIGO, that you can see here, to really convert this stretching and squeezing into these flashes of light. Now, this stretching and squeezing makes those mirrors move this tiny fraction of the Earth's ever-present motion. So we need to decouple the mirrors from the Earth's motion. And for that, we use suspensions. Now, here's my mirror, and here's my suspension. Now, with decoupling, I mean a situation where the Earth is moving, and the mirror is moving much less. So let's see what happens at low frequency. So you see, no decoupling really occurs. The mirror moves as much as the Earth. But at high frequency, you see that this is not the case, and there is decoupling. And that is why on Earth we can measure gravitational waves at high frequency. Now, the longer you make your suspensions, the lower the frequency is at which this decoupling occurs. Now, in reality, these suspensions are much more complex. Here, for example, you see a mirror hanging off a 9 meter long suspension, and this is still not long enough to shield against the Earth's seismic wall, which comes from the ocean's waves bashing on the Earth's shore. So, to measure gravitational waves at low frequency, we need to go to a place where there are no oceans, for example, the moon. There we can deploy a vibration sensor, for example, this one, developed during my PhD, or rather an upgrade of it, because I think that by introducing some superconductive elements with the necessary cryogenics, we can make it even more sensitive, especially at low frequency. Now the moon, just like the uh, Earth that you saw in the previous movie, wobbles, uh, and by introducing an array of these sensors on the Moon, uh, we can then measure gravitational waves at low frequency. Having such an array on the Moon will also allow us to do prospecting for lunar mining. We can look, for example, at helium-3 or the rare earth metals that you find in your phone or in your laptop. We can look for ice or we can watch at the interior of the Moon, and this is called lunar geophysics. But back to gravitational wave science, I would love to hear these two supermassive black holes revolving around each other as part of the Cosmic Symphony. Thank you for your attention.